Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. So the NBA trade deadline has passed and I thought for today's video what I would do is I would give my predictions for how I think the 2022 NBA season is going to end and the rankings for the conferences, man. Like 1 through 15 East and West, man. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, based off that. So it's not necessarily like who I think the best teams are because, you know, obviously some teams got injury situations and stuff, which obviously has to be put into play here. Um, but just kind of how I think things are going to go, right, man? So before we get going on this, if you guys don't mind leaving a like on the video and, of course, subscribe to the channel, would be greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and start with the Eastern Conference. So, um, all right, so the first team list will be who I think is I think is going to finish first in the conference, right, man? And to be quite honest, after the trade deadline pass, I think it's the Philadelphia 76ers. And the reason I say that is because, for one, Joel Embiid is playing MVP basketball. But also, you know, yes, they lost Drummond. Drummond is a good backup center, right? Um, they lost Seth Curry. Ben Simmons hasn't played it all this season, yet the team's still 32-22. and 22. So you essentially, you know, he's a non-fact for how the team's performing thus far. So that means you are replacing Drummond and Curry with James Harden. Like, come on now, man. Come on now. That's absolutely crazy, right? Um, okay, so... I'm going to go number two, number two, number two. I am going to go with the Miami Heat, man. I feel like, I really feel like this team is like hitting its stride and everything like that. And, uh, you know, the team's getting healthy. Old Depot, hopefully he's back, you know, relatively soon and everything. That'd be kind of nice to see. But, uh, you know, Bam's good to go. Jimmy Butler's good to go. Like, this team's good to go. You love to see it. Um, next up, number three, I am going to go with the Chicago Bulls. I just don't really see this team cooling off at all. They're currently second place. They'll tie the Cleveland Cavaliers for second place and everything. But, uh, yeah, man, I don't really see any, any reason for this team to slow down at all. Um, next up, I'm, I'm kind of like between Cleveland and the Bucks because Cleveland's been playing really great. The Bucks had a slow start to the season. I love the addition of Serge Ibaka. I feel like Giannis is going to go even more just monster mode and everything. So these two are really interchangeable for me, but I think I'm going to go for with the Bucks. I'm going to, you know, give Giannis the benefit of the doubt here, but also with my great respect towards the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. And the reason I don't mind doing this right here is um, there was a rumor, not really a rumor, but I, I guess an NBA executive on some NBA team in the East went on the record to say that they were uh, really just like almost like afraid of the James Harden to the 76ers thing. They said, they said that makes them a better team than them. And there's only four teams in front of the 76ers. So it's got to be one of these teams that they're talking about there, man. But yeah, I like that right there. Um, let's go ahead and go with number six. Number six, I'm going to go with the Brooklyn Nets. Now, right now, they're playing garbage. Absolutely atrocious basketball. I mean, yeah, like James Harden got traded, so he hasn't played um, the last few games. Uh, you also got, you know, uh, Kyrie Irving's only playing a select few games. Kevin Durant's been injured. Um, Joe Harris has had injuries and stuff like that too, man. So, like, I feel like once Ben Simmons gets out there, there's gonna it's going to take some time for them to figure things out. But also... I just feel like, you know, Kyrie's not playing every single game. So I can't really justify moving the Nets up any higher than this whatsoever, man, whatsoever. Uh, the next team I want to go with, um, so it's going to be for the seventh seed. Uh, I am going to go with, where are they at? The Toronto Raptors. Um, the Raptors have been my uh, comeback team of the season. I said that before the season started. Currently, they're sixth place, and uh, they're looking pretty damn good, man. You know, they... Uh, you know, maybe like uh, some little things here and there and everything. They got Thaddeus Young on the squad, but the core of the squad, you know, Pascal Siakam playing some of his best basketball, Fred Van Vliet, an all-star, like, yeah, man, definitely a good point of them right there. Honestly, that's probably closer to how I truly feel. I just, this Nets team, chemistry is going to be a thing. That's honestly how I feel more, man, now that I look at it. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Uh, so now we're at the eighth seed. So who do I think is going to get that eighth seed right there? Oh, uh, you got the Celtics, Hornets, Hawks. Uh, I don't think the Wizards do anything with Bradley Beal. I guess the Knicks could also still make a run. Um, I'm. It's really between the Celtics and the Hornets for me on this one. I think I'm going to go with the Celtics and then play in spot to the Hornets. Once again, that could flip-flop just like that for me, man. I, I, I guess um, with the Celtics, you know, I am going to give, the, give the, the, uh, the benefit of the doubt to Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. So, I also like that they brought uh, Tice back on the team. So, yeah, and I guess a little shooter's out there, but they got, you know, well, I guess they got Derek White, too. Yeah, I actually did like that pickup. He's like a 15-5-5 five five guy. Replaced him with Dennis Schroeder and everything. So, I would say this is all right. Although, Montrez on the Hornets is also pretty deadly. But, yeah, once again, pretty interchangeable. Um, 
especially when you get down to the knee gritty like i said there's only a few team a few games that bring these teams right here man so yeah we got eight nine so we got one more playing spot and i'm gonna give that final playing spot to yeah i don't think i don't think the wizards do anything without beal uh it's gonna be between the hawks and the knicks so trey young julius randall I'm going to go with the Hawks, man. I think the Hawks are going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Hawks right there. And then um, for that final play-in seed, and then after that, it doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead. Uh, I guess I should do it in order, man. So, yeah, uh, at this point, after them, I'm going to say the follow-up is going to be the New York Knicks. After that, let's go with the, uh, the Wizards. Let's go with the Pacers. I do think that the Pistons are going to be a bit better than... The Magic, I do think Marvin Bagley is a better player than the guys we gave up. It's like, yes, we did give up Trey Lyles and stuff, but who has been solid at times for us. But I think Marvin Bagley is going to be nice. And then you got the Orlando Magic. And I think that's I think that's 15 teams, right, man? Yeah, that should be all of them there. So now that leads us to the Western Conference. I think the East, I, I think I did pretty well there, man. I think that's pretty well. I, I don't think this is anything that anybody can argue with. Like, yes, you can have your different... I guess, okay, you... You can argue with it. You can have your differences. But I don't think this is like a bad take at all, man. I feel like what I said here is a pretty good take. So, yes, man. Alrighty. Uh, next up, we got the Western Conference. That Suns team is like just like a fine oiled machine right now, man. They are unbelievable, right? They are unbelievable. I mean, CP3, Devin Booker. Yeah, they're, they're going to get first place, man. They are looking like historic. I mean, not historically great, but, you know, they got 10 losses already. But, I mean... Still a really uh, good-ass record, man. Okay, next up. I'm going to go with the Warriors, too, man. I feel like the West isn't as difficult as the East, to be quite honest. Um, you know, Clay Thompson is incorporated fully into the team. Uh, hopefully, they get, you know, James Wisen back and stuff like that. So, yeah, we're going to go with them right there. Um, number three, we're going to go ahead and keep it with the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, we keep on saying, like, oh, when's this team going to slow down? Ain't, ain't going to be in the regular season. It's not going to be in the regular season, man. Not going to be in the regular season. All right, number four. So, number four, I'm actually going to go ahead and bump up the uh, Denver Nuggets. And the reason I say that is because I just read that, like, Michael Porter and Jamal Murray should be back very soon. Very soon, man. So, that's yeah, great for them. Um, next up, I'm going to go with fifth seed. Let's say the Utah Jazz. Um... You know, the reason that I don't, that I had them fallen, you know, to the fifth seed instead of the fourth seed or whatnot is because, you know, not having like Joe Ingles and dudes like that, man, it definitely hurt the team and stuff. So, yeah, I feel like that's a good spot for them. Uh, number, uh, what is it, man? Four, five, six. Okay, six for me, it's probably going to be between the T Wolves and the Mavericks. Now, the Mavericks lost Chris Topps Porzingis, which I don't love. In the sense, well, I don't know, man, because um, I know I had a Mavs fan reach out to me and said that the Mavericks actually have a better record without Luka and Kristaps playing together. So, I mean, Dinwiddie, I don't know if I love the fit, but I know he's capable of maybe being a good fit next to Luka. I just, ugh, I'm a little wary about it. Maybe it was a chemistry thing on the Wizards. I don't really know. I mean, Davis Bertans, uh, historically, is a great three-point shooter. I'm going to go ahead and give it to them, man. You know, Luka Doncic. No, wait. No, no. Minnesota. Minnesota. Then the Mavericks. Okay, I feel better about that, man. Um... The Minnesota kind of been on a tear, man. 29-26. Yeah, I feel like that's well warranted. Well warranted. And then I'm going to go ahead and get that eighth seed. I'm going to give it to the Lakers. I mean, it's you, you would think LeBron and Anthony Davis, even with Russell Westbrook out there, would be good for the eighth seed. They, they have to be, man. They have to be. They have to be. You have to get that eighth seed. You can't just not make the playoffs, man. You can't just not make the playoffs. Um, and then we got two playing spots right there. Uh, the first playing spot I am going to give to the Sacramento Kings. I think that was the reason for trading for uh, Sabonis. It was the reason for trading for Sabonis, man. Like in the short term, they're trying to make the playoffs, trying to bring some excitement to Sacramento. Can't really blame, uh, blame him right there on that. But yeah, we're going to give it to them, man. And I guess for the final playing spot, I don't really care, bro. Uh, Pelicans, I guess. I, I mean, even if Zion does or doesn't play like Ingram and CJ, that's, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. This this Clippers team, I mean, I'm probably heavily disrespecting the Clippers team, but right now they're 27 and 30. Um, we don't know when Kawhi and Paul George are coming back. Like some of those wins that they do have, those 27 wins, is because of Paul George. So I just kind of see them slowly keep on dipping down even more, man. So I'm gonna say the next team right here. Um, I mean, I'll give it to the Clippers, I guess. After that, let's go with the 
Let's go with the Spurs. Let's go with the OKC Thunder. Let's go with the Rockets. And let's go with the Portland Trail Blazers. I do think the Portland Trail Blazers are going to end up having the worst record, man, in the Western Conference. I think Damian Lillard is going to get shut down for the rest of the season. I do, man. Like, I'm for Nate Simons. It's cool and everything. But uh, this team knows what they're doing as far as, you know, they, they, they sold all their veteran players. They sold anybody that doesn't fit their rebuild. And they're going to get themselves a top pick. And the Dame's going to be back. And we're going to kind of go from there, man. So, yes, this is my predictions. Um, I think it's I think it's good. I think it's justifiable, which is kind of what I always go for. What do you guys all think? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. And peace out, my friends.